Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for coming to today's gathering, the official launch of Maine Philanthropy Center's partnership with Impala. My name is Jeanette, and I am the president and CEO of the Maine Philanthropy Center. For those that would find this helpful, I'm going to visually describe myself. I'm a multiracial woman, Filipina and white, with dark brown hair, bright lipstick, and some funky shaped green earrings. We are so pleased that we are launching this today and excited to dig right in. Um, before that, and for those of you who don't know us yet, let me just say a couple of words about Maine Philanthropy Center, or MPC, as we sometimes refer to ourselves. Our mission is to provide opportunity, leadership, and support to advance the effectiveness of philanthropy in Maine and its ability to make a meaningful difference. We are an organization of foundations, corporate, private, private public, family, community, many different types, uh, nonprofits, individuals, and other philanthropic practitioners. Maine is the epicenter of our work and we come together to build relationships, deepen knowledge, and move resources. Our diverse membership is our strength, allowing us to facilitate cross-sector collaboration, create shared understanding, dismantle ineffective silos, and shift power to ensure that Maine is a leader in advancing equity, which is why we are so pleased to offer this opportunity and this partnership to create more equitable access and a greater understanding of philanthropic resources and how they move through the state, and to facilitate relationship building and collaboration by understanding how we are all connected to each other. A bit of housekeeping before we begin. First, this meeting will be recorded and the video will be made available afterwards. Second, we will have a dedicated question and answer session at the end of the program. Um, but until that point, I welcome you to share any questions or comments that you may have in the chat. The Impala team will be monitoring, monitoring it for questions and will do their best to address them as they go. Um, and now David, over to you. Thank you, Jeanette, and hello, Maine. It's incredible to see so many change makers here today, nonprofits and importantly, funders alike. My name is David Fox Esther. I use he, him pronouns, and I am joining you from the land of the Massachusetts and Pawtucket, otherwise known as Boston. I am one of Impala's partnership directors, and I'm a veteran of both the philanthropy and nonprofit sectors. I'm also joined by our incredible team, who you'll be hearing from soon. We'd love, love, love for our time together to be collaborative and conversational. So I invite you to share your name, organization, and location in the chat if you haven't done so yet, as well as perhaps what inspired you to tune in today. Also, if you have any questions as we go forward, please write them in the chat and our team will answer you there. And then we'll also have some time at the end for Q&A before we close. So let's get started and talk about the three things that we're going to cover today. First, I'll share a bit of background about Impala, its mission and the products we're building. Then my colleague Danielle will take you through a live demo so you can see some of the platform's really powerful capabilities. And then finally, we'll speak about our partnership with Maine Philanthropy Center, which we're hoping will foster universal data access across Maine's social impact sector, and of course, how you can get involved. So now on to a quick executive summary to help us get oriented. Impala is a groundbreaking new platform that's transforming philanthropy as we know it. We make social impact data accessible and actionable by offering three particular products. First, profiles. So every nonprofit and philanthropic foundation already has a profile on Impala that deals information about their impact, people, financials, and every single grant that they've given or received. You can think about it like GuideStar and Foundation Directory Online combined into one platform with more data and insights and, really important, completely for free. And then second, we have Ecosystems, an advanced research application that allows you to analyze any nonprofit ecosystem anywhere in the country. For example, if you want to understand what the philanthropic ecosystem and climate change in Maine looks like, who the organizations and funders are that are part of it, and how they're all connected, you'll be able to do so with a click of a button. And speaking of clicks of a button, it got ahead of me. And then finally, we have my portfolio, which focuses on each funder's own ecosystem, allowing them to seamlessly track, manage, and optimize their own grant portfolio. And now, in partnership with the Maine Philanthropy Center, Impala is providing all nonprofits and funders that serve Maine with premium access to our entire platform for 12 months. So Maine is the second state in New England to join the Impala community following a really, really successful rollout in Massachusetts. And in just a few weeks, our friends in Rhode Island will be coming aboard too. So we have lots to celebrate all across New England. But like everything we do at Impala, 
it's really important for us to center the voices of those who actually use the platform and have helped us shape what it is today. So I'd love to hand the mic over to Jennifer Hutchins, Executive Director at the Maine Association of Nonprofits. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, um, everyone, for being here. It's exciting to see how much enthusiasm there is for this um, partnership between MPC and Impala. Um, as David said, I'm the executive director of the Maine Association of Nonprofits, and I also am a member of the Maine Philanthropy Center board. And it's been really exciting to learn more about Impala as this partnership has unfolded. Um, I'm particularly interested in its potential to spark really real positive change in our sector in Maine. Um, we, uh, my colleagues uh, across the sector have been calling for more transparency and better communication uh, between funders and nonprofits so that together, since we all have many, many shared goals to strengthening our communities, we've been wanting this type of access um, that is super promising for our state. So I'm, I'm really excited about today's launch. Um, and clearly based on today's attendance, <laughs> it's great to see so many of you piping in from across the state. Um, Impala's mission focus is really highlighting this significant need for more connection and information sharing. It really has the potential to level the playing field and transform the way we all work together across our charitable nonprofit sector. Super exciting. What exactly is Impala bringing to the table? Clearly access to data, insight, and relationships. And in particular, I'm excited for this ability to um, provide information to organizations that traditionally have not had access to this kind of data, whether those are BIPOC-led organizations or under-resourced uh, organizations, rural organizations. Our sector is made up of very, very small nonprofits that are mighty, mighty people wanting to make change in their communities, but have not had the resources to access this data and Impala is really opening up that potential. Um, what is particularly promising about Impala so far? I've been so impressed by how the team is clearly mission driven and they understand nonprofits. Many of the team members I've met have worked in nonprofits and they understand the importance of being responsive. And as an innovative tech oriented company, they're going to be making practical changes based on your feedback and your needs. So far, they've been so receptive and collaborative. It's so encouraging and it's real, it's authentic. I've seen it. And um, they wanna build this so that it works for us in Maine. And so I really encourage all of my colleagues out there today to, um, to make really make use of this resource because Impala is ready to help us build a platform that works for all of us. And so I'm ex very, very excited about the potential for what this data can do to transform our sector. And so now I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, Gabriella, who's the executive director at the Sewell Foundation and also a fellow MPC board member, Gabriella. Thanks, Jennifer, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm really happy to be here with you. As Jen said, I'm Gabrielle Calde. I'm the executive director of the Omina B. Sewell Foundation. We uh, work across the state in Maine. We're based out of Freeport, and our mission is to improve the well being of people, animals, and the environment while fostering equity and centering community voices. Um, I would say that. The reason I've been really excited about Impala and telling my staff about it um, since seeing the first demonstration at MPC, as Jen said, I'm also on the MPC board, so I got to see a demo of it. Part of it was the vision of what it can make possible, while at the same time, it's a very practical tool that has be been really informed by nonprofits and uh, funders, and as Jen mentioned, the staff at Impala have experience working within philanthropy and nonprofits, and that really shows. Um, I think what it makes possible is transparency. It makes um, visibility of the entire philanthropic sector in Maine more visible to all of us. It allows us as a foundation to understand our place within the ecosystem and to reveal opportunities for collaboration, um, for connecting people in one place. And as a funder that really believes in collaboration, not just among nonprofits, but also among funders, 
I think that Impala really opens up new possibilities. The commitment to access the information and functionalities of the platform make it really possible to imagine new ways of working with our grantee partners and with peer funders. Um, for example, the ability to unlock access to the data, to some of the insights that are possible, and the relationships that we all need to thrive in our work changes what's possible and it also begins to shift power dynamics. I think um, information can really help to shift some of that power um, inequality that um, we have in the philanthropic and nonprofit ecosystem. And for a state the size of Maine, um, launching this platform and what it makes possible could really change how we engage with each other within the broader nonprofit ecosystem. So I think um, what the Impala team is about to show you is a live platform that's already making a difference. It's certainly going to continue to be a game changer for how we at Sewell Foundation get informed, conduct due diligence, and partner with our grantees. So my call to action to all of you is to, I encourage you to really try out Impala. Explore what it can do for you. Figure out, you know, spend a few minutes just exploring it, which is what I've been doing, clicking here and there, just seeing what comes up. And to my fellow funders, not only do I highly recommend joining, but also sharing the platform with your grantees because of what it makes possible for nonprofits as well. It's not every day that we get a very tangible opportunity to support our grantees in a way beyond a grant. Um, and as a funder that believes that money is not enough to create change, um, I'm really excited about being able to add one more tool to our toolbox. Uh, we can do it and they're getting everything for free um, with this partnership with MPC. Um, you'll have access to this for free for a year. And this really feels like um, action towards capacity building. And the more of us that are leaning in, the better our whole ecosystem becomes. So. It's been a privilege to be part of this conversation and to be learning and exploring um, this platform with the team and with MPC. And we look forward to the journey that we'll all be on in Maine. Uh, so David, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Gabriella, and thank you, Jennifer, uh, for both of your really kind words. Now let's shift to what we're actually building and how Impala works. So the first thing Impala does is centralize a lot of data, and from three particular sources, uh, beginning with publicly available data. So we've already scraped all of the 990 forms of every 501c3 nonprofit and philanthropic foundation. And in addition, we source data from funders and nonprofits that join the platform. And this all goes into a pipeline where we curate the data into pre-populated profiles for every single organization. And the result of this process is our networked data infrastructure. It has profiles for every organization and a search engine that allows you to navigate through them. And on top of this huge data set, we're building a suite of applications that are aimed to serve every need that nonprofits and funders have. So we started with our own version of a business intelligence solution. We call it ecosystems. And as we mentioned, it allows you to analyze any nonprofit ecosystem in the country. And I also mentioned my portfolio earlier, which allows every funder to understand its own ecosystem and optimize their grant making portfolio. And on this, at the same time, we're working on a set of future applications tailored to all of your needs. So for example, our relationship intelligence application will allow you to see exactly how you're connected to hundreds of thousands of organizations and people in the sector. And we're also building a centralized grant portal, portal that will dramatically improve the grant application and processing process the grant application and processing process. And finally, we'll add on donation solutions to ensure funding from foundations and individuals can get to exactly where it needs to go to all of you nonprofits out there. The long-term vision of what we're building here is what we're calling a comprehensive giving network, one digital platform that already includes all the data that you need and simplifies communications, fundraising, reporting, and information exchange between every nonprofit and funder. Now, what I've just shared with you is a 
30,000 foot view of what we're building, which is really important because we want you to be in the loop now and in the future. But now let's shift over to today's demo. Uh, and we're gonna focus on the network data infrastructure in particular, meaning the organization profiles and on the first two applications we've launched, ecosystems and my portfolio. So for our demo, I wanna introduce Danielle Belanger, Impala's partnership director, who's leading our work in Maine. Danielle will explain the specific use cases we're about to demo and then show you how the platform works works in real time. So Danielle, over to you. Thank you, David. Great to be here with all of you today. Having spent over 10 years in the sector before joining Impala, I'm excited to be here and show you the ropes about how the sector is already using Impala. So let's jump right in and look at some grant maker use cases. So the first typical use case we see for folks is around due diligence. Impala provides a way to evaluate any nonprofit in the US without asking your nonprofits a single question. The other, the other use case we'd like to suggest is the portfolio evaluation. So this is a way to track and analyze your giving, looking at things like grantee growth and assessing overall risk in your grants. And the last use case is through this idea of targeted co-funding, which Gab Gabriella mentioned earlier. It's a way to discover funders who think and give like you as a way to collaborate and drive efficiency across the sector. And then on the flip side, there's, of course, use cases for nonprofits as well, the first of which is intelligent prospecting. So Impala provides a way for you all to build prioritized prospect lists based on three things, mission alignment, capacity to give, and existing relationships. So keep those three things in mind as we go through the platform. I'll be spotlighting them as we demo. The next use case is strategic planning. So of course, this tool provides you a way to set actionable fundraising targets that are informed by past performance and current funding trends in your particular sector. And then the last use case, which is of course relevant to both nonprofits and grant makers, is Impala provides a tool for board members, executives, and donors to get a single interactive platform to track your impact as an organization. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and jump into a demo of the platform. So give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Great. So here we are. We landed on Impala.digital. And I'm going to go ahead and click log in right here. And this will get us to the main page of Impala. So what we're seeing here is those the nearly 3 million profiles for every funder and nonprofit right at our fingertips through this search functionality. So we can search by organization name, which we'll do in a minute, or we can search by advanced criteria here to refine these results down below. I'm going to go ahead and type in an organization name and to not put anybody on the spot today, I'm going to be focusing on Massachusetts based organizations. So let's go ahead and jump into the Samaritans profile here. And what we're seeing here is a standard nonprofit profile. It has this header section at the top with some basic information like the organization name and its mission statement and details about its digital real estate like its website and social media links if it has them. And you might have noticed this check mark here at the top. Now we're not Twitter. <laughs> this is telling you that somebody from Samaritan says, come on and claimed their profile. And typically one of the first things folks do when they claim their profile is to actually go ahead and upload a 990. So David mentioned we've scraped from publicly available 990s, but we know there's a lag between the ones you submit and the ones that are publicly available. So if you click that plus sign and you click the upload file, that provides you a way to get your profile updated within just a few days. We take that new form you've submitted and update your profile for you. So we can see here there are three sections, impact, people, and financials. So we'll start with financials because that's where we landed um, when we got to the profile. And just to take a step back, if we're coming to the profile, we might be a funder doing due diligence. We could be a peer nonprofit evaluating Samaritan's list of supporters to see who might support us. Or we could be Samaritans themselves using this as a way to guide our own internal planning processes. So with that in mind, we can see here a nice initial story about this organization. We can see that their operating budget has been growing over time. We can also see some other visuals here, this funders change graph here on the right. And this is telling us the number of funders who've started or stopped supporting Samaritans in any given year. 
So if we're a peer nonprofit to Samaritans, we could come here to see who those 20 organizations are that started supporting them who might not have yet been supporting me. And we can understand that because they're a peer organization, there's likely some degree of alignment with our mission. And we can also evaluate their capacity to give based on the funding amount that they gave to Samaritans. So if we see somebody on this list that we're curious to explore further, we can actually go ahead and add them to a list on the platform. And this is a way to kind of collect that information across the platform without losing um, track on your journey. We'll get into lists a little bit later. So we can see some other visuals here around revenues and expenses, assets and liabilities. And these are all some really useful tools to help with our due diligence process as a funder. Now we get down to this funder summary section here, and this is a place where you can see all of the aggregated history of the supporters of this nonprofit. So let's say I'm a funder doing due diligence on this organization. Maybe I want to talk to somebody I know at another organization. Maybe I know someone at the United Way of Mass Bay to see if they could give me any intel about this organization to know if they could be a good fit for me. So we can see here they have eight, they've, they've given eight grants to Samaritans, which uh, indicates to me some degree of history between the two organizations. So I could shoot somebody a quick email or give a quick call to them over at United Way to get some initial insights before reaching out to Samaritans. Let's go back up to the top here and go into the people section. So the people section is just like what it sounds. We know philanthropy is relationship based. So we gave you a place to explore all the executives, board members and employees of Samaritans. So we can see that's largely drawn from the 990 here, but folks can also come in and add a person to this list as well. So this could be a place that you could come to do some cross-referencing perhaps with LinkedIn or also to do some board development work as a nonprofit. So these first two sections we looked at here are all pre-filled from the 990, ready to go when you get on Impala. And let's take a look at this last section here, the impact section. So this is a place where we can see details about the work this organization does, the causes that it works around, the populations that it serves with its programs, and details about its successes. And we can see here anywhere on the platform that we see this pencil icon is a place where you as a user can make an update to your profile. Let's take a look at this last section here. This is the program section of the profile, and this is where Samaritans has added details about all of the offerings that it, it provides to the community. So anytime they add an activity to this list, not only does it populate on the map on the right, but it also actually populates it on all of their funders profile pages. So anyone coming to the profile of their funders will also see details about their great work. So this is a nonprofit profile. I'm going to go back up to and go to the search feature here and pull up a foundation that is a Massachusetts based foundation, the Bar Foundation. And so we'll see here they are. And we can again see that nice check mark, meaning that they are on the platform. And let's go ahead and take a look at this profile. So we can see some details about this organization at the top, just like we did for the nonprofit. And we can also notice the same three sections here, impact, people, and financials. So we'll focus on the two new sections, funding and funding overlap today. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here to the funding section. So this is a place where you might come as a nonprofit to do evaluation of this funder as a potential supporter for your work. So we can see here a number of different data points that the system calculates for you. And I'm just going to zero in on a couple of those for our conversation today. So the first of these is this grantee reliance number here. And that is telling us that typically the Bar Foundation's grants to its nonprofits make up roughly 9% of those nonprofits, but annual operating budget. So this grantee reliance number tells us a couple of things about the type of organizations that this foundation typically serves and their risk tolerance. Let's take a look at this multi-year grantees number here in the years and portfolio graph. These two uh, pieces of information provide us some insights into the longevity of our relationship with this funder as a potential supporter. So we can see over half of the portfolio, the portfolio grantees have received multiple years of support. And we can see that on an even more detailed level here in the years and portfolio graph with some grantees receiving over six years of support. So if we get our foot in the door with that initial ask, we might have the chance of having a really long-term relationship with this funder. 
And on that note, thinking about that initial ask, that first that first year approach, we've created these median grants numbers over here. So this provides you a reference point to right size that ask for the initial proposal to understand what the typical grant amount is from this funder. And then you can also see the trajectory of the typical dollar amount support you're likely to receive if you get that first year grant. So it's another way to help prioritize your, your list, that prospect list that you're building as you browse Impala. Let's continue on our journey and take a look at this nonprofit's change graph here. So if we are a nonprofit coming to evaluate this funder, we can come here to see the nonprofits that they started or stopped supporting in any given year. So we can click in and see all of those nonprofits they started supporting and see if we see any peer nonprofits among this list that would signal some degree of mission alignment. And if we see any peers among this list, we can also then review the funding amount as a way to understand if they're giving at an amount that meets my needs. So let's continue on our journey. So we can see here, we have a grants by year, a grants by size and a grants given chart. All three of these things interact on the platform. And we can see here, we have almost 1700 grants given that we could review and evaluate. That is a lot. <laughs> So we made this easier to refine. You can just click in this, these graphs above to refine that list. So let's say we're fundraising for a grant of twenty-five dollars to $50,000. We can see then that this grants given list updated, and you also might have noticed the graph on the left updated as well. So we can now browse this reduced list, for, you know, saving ourselves a lot of time and see if we see any peer organizations among this list of grantees or any alignment with the grant descriptions that we see in front of us as well. And because we already narrowed this list down for dollar amount, we know that we've already um, aligned ourselves in terms of capacity. And the other thing that you would you could see here is if this grant was given through a donor advised fund, it would have a tag here in this column. So let's go back up to the top and go to the last new section in the funder profile. So this is the funding overlap section of the profile. So funding overlap is telling us the number of, the, it's telling us the funders who gave to the same nonprofits in the same year as the Bar Foundation. So we can see here, there's almost 4,000 co-funders and those could be intentional or even unintentional across the organizations on this list. So let's go ahead and see one of these we'll see this pair between the Bar Foundation and the Boston Foundation. And let's say I'm the Bar Foundation coming to do some exploration on my profile. And maybe I want to think about doing a potential co-funding opportunity or maybe some data sharing with the Boston Foundation to drive some more efficiency in the sector. This could be a place where I could come to explore who has received our support in common. You might also come here if you're a nonprofit who has already received support from the Bar Foundation to see who gives like them. So we could come here and see, do we see our peer nonprofits among this list of common grantees? And if so, how much did the Boston Foundation give to, to support them as a way to understand their capacity to give? So if I think they're a good fit, I could go ahead and actually hover over and add them to a list. And we'll take a look at that list feature in a minute. And let's say you've decided they're a great fit, you've added them to that list, and now you want to connect with the Boston Foundation. This could be a great opportunity to reach out to the Bar Foundation, see if they know anyone at the Boston Foundation. In best case scenario, get a warm introduction to a new potential funder. And worst case scenario, you still get viewed as a data-driven nonprofit, which is always a good thing. So we just finished looking at search and profiles, and all of this is completely free for all of you on an unlimited basis and in perpetuity. So I encourage you to come into the platform and poke all around in the, these tools. Let's shift gears a little bit and jump into the list feature, which I tease a little bit over our time today thus far together. So this list feature, it was in response to the request for folks to be able to kind of build out their research right on Impala. So it's a place where you could come to collaborate with colleagues if you're a funder on developing a potential invite list of applicants, or if you're a nonprofit of developing a funder prospect list. So let's go ahead and jump in real quick to one of these funder prospect lists. And we can see here, I have 14 different funders I've added to this list. And we can see details about these organizations, like their median grant number, as a way to do some additional evaluation of these organizations. If I want to collaborate with colleagues, I can share this, this list with other folks on the platform, and we can exchange comments back and forth here right on the platform. 
And once we finish that exchange, that cl collaboration on Impala, we can actually go ahead and export this to a spreadsheet. So we know you probably all have your own processes outside of the platform. And so by exporting it to a spreadsheet, you can integrate it into that workflow and continue on your way. And more to come on that, we are working on integrations with other database tools that you might use. So keep an eye out for that. So this is the list feature. And we, up until now, I showed you how to add to the list from the profiles, but we can also do that from another section, the ecosystem section. So the, as a reminder, the ecosystems, ecosystems section is the premium feature of Impala that you all have access to under the partnership that we have with Maine Philanthropy Center. And an ecosystem is a way to analyze any nonprofit sector anywhere across the country. And we think about that in three different frameworks. The first is through this landscape markers lens. And this is a way to evaluate based on cause area or geography, see all of the nonprofits and funders working in a particular sector like climate change in Portland. The next lens we have is the funders framework. And this is a way where you as a nonprofit could plug in that prospect list and do some additional analysis and prioritization. And the last approach we offer is the nonprofits framework. And this is a way if you're a funder to do some additional due diligence work on those applicants or as a nonprofit as a way to plug in some peer organizations and see who is supporting them, who could maybe be supporting you. So let's take a look at the landscape markers ecosystem to get us started. So as a reminder, this is based on geography and causes. So I want you to, and I want to mention, keep an eye on these numbers down here as I start to fill in criteria. So we're going to go ahead and do the state of Maine statewide ecosystem. We could do any combination of city, state, or county. If we wanted to look at all of New England or just a couple of states in Maine, uh, cities in Maine, we could do that. And you can see here we have over 15,000 nonprofits and 2,800 funders in this sector right now. But I want to refine that a little further. So I'm going to go ahead and select a cause area as well. And you can see this list that appeared when I clicked in is based off of the IRS's NTEE codes. Now you can select subcategories as well, and you can select as many as you want. For our purposes today, I'm going to just select human services. So you can see here now this number reduced to about, four, to about 500 nonprofits and to 440 funders. Now, if we didn't see our particular interest area captured in this cause area list, or we wanted to further refine this ecosystem, we could use keywords as well. I'm not going to for our time here today, but that is an option as you get going on the platform. And one last way to further refine this ecosystem is these advanced criteria. So I want to call particular attention to this ability to include or exclude grants given through donor advised funds. So here we go, I'm gonna to toggle off to exclude and you can see that the funders number reduced. So let's go ahead and jump into our ecosystem and get exploring. So we can see here the dashboard for the ecosystem, which we'll look at the same across all of those ecosystem frameworks. It's organized by funding and nonprofits. So we can see almost $69 million going to this ecosystem of about 500 nonprofits. And that support is being given by 426 funders and over 2,200 grants. So this is a nice big picture view of the ecosystem, but of course we want to get more granular so we can get some action out of this, this exploration. So let's navigate using this menu along the left here and jump right into the funding summary section. So this funding section of the ecosystem is probably most relevant to those of you who are nonprofits doing prospect research or to funders on the call doing peer comparison. So this summary section here has some nice high level statistics, but we can also see some visuals down here as well. Things like the total funding going into this ecosystem over time and this funder change graph here. So this is a place to see, just like we saw on the profile, now an ecosystem level view of all the funders who started or stopped supporting this work. And we can again click in and see who those organizations are and see their average grant size as the way to evaluate them on their capacity to give. So if we see anyone on this list who we might want to consider, we can go ahead and add them to that list, just like we've done along the way. Let's move right along to the grant distribution section here. So again, I hope these visuals look familiar. We saw these on the profile level, and now we're looking at them on the macro ecosystem level. 
So again, let's pretend we're a nonprofit fundraising for a small project of five to ten thousand dollars. We can adjust and see this number went from twenty two hundred to five hundred. And now let's say we just want to look at those most recent grants. We can now see that's down to a much more manageable list of about one hundred. So this is the list of every individual grant that has been given to support this ecosystem. And as a nonprofit, we could use this as a way to evaluate alignment, looking for peer organizations or reviewing that grant description for additional context. And if we see anyone on this list that we think is, you know, signals that alignment, we could go ahead and add that funder to a list who supported them. So this is where all we saw all the individual grants, but now to take a little bit of a zoom out, we can go to the comparison section here. And this is a comparison of all of the funders who have given grants to this ecosystem. So we can see there are 423 funders captured on this chart, and we've provided a variety of data points that you can use to evaluate across all of those funders. And at any point on the platform, if you're curious or you don't remember, you can hover over these columns to see a description of that data point. For our purposes today, I'm just going to flag a couple that I would like to suggest to folks when evaluating potential funder supporters. So we can see here the first one is this ecosystem focus, and let's take the main community foundation as our example. So we can see that they have a 6% roughly ecosystem focus, and that tells us that they are giving 6% of their grant making portfolio to support this ecosystem as we defined it. So it tells us that they are not just giving a one-off grant to this work that they are invested in and giving to this particular sector. And the other data point I like to suggest is this grantee change number here. So this is telling us that Maine Community Foundation gave to 26 new organizations across this ecosystem. It tells us a couple of things. First of all, that they are again active in this particular sector and also that they're giving to new organizations. So if I'm somebody who's not been a grantee before, I might still have a shot and have a receptive um, audience at the community foundation. So that was the funding comparison section. I'm going to jump quickly to the overlap and just mention to you, we saw this on the funder profile as well, but this is now on an ecosystem level. And we can see a lot of data points to work with over 4,000 pairs of funders who support this work. I won't dig into all of this, but a lot of great information that you can use to see where the money is coming to and going from in this ecosystem. So let's switch gears to the nonprofit side of this ecosystem. And this is most relevant for, not for funders who are doing their due diligence work on the platform or for nonprofits, again, doing peer comparison. So you come to this funder sum this nonprofit summary section here, and you can see things like the number of nonprofits, their typical operating budget, and their cash reserves. So if you're a funder, you might use this as a way to refine an existing grant program or to shape a new program that you're exploring. Let's continue right on and go into the comparison section here. So this is the place just like we had on the funding side. Now we have a nonprofit comparison chart to look at all those nearly 500 nonprofits doing the work in this sector. So we can compare across things like their uh, revenues and expenses, financials, their people and their funding. So this is a place where you could come as a funder to do some initial due diligence work. And if you see an organization on this list that you want to add to your invites, you can go ahead and add them to a list just like we were doing for the funder prospect list earlier. Now, up until this point, we've really been looking at a moment in time data points, but we know folks like to see change over time as well. So we created this growth section here. So again, we can see the details on these roughly 500 nonprofits, but this time we're seeing their change and growth over time around things like their budget, their expenses, and their staff size. So instead of as a funder, instead of going to your nonprofits and asking them for those five years of 990s and then doing all the math yourself, you can come here and see all of it done for you right at your fingertips as another level of due diligence into organizations. So I know we just covered a lot. We covered the whole ecosystem, both the funding and the nonprofit side. But we also know that funders themselves are actually their own ecosystems. So I'm going to switch gears and go to my funder account and show you this tool, My Portfolio, that we created to that end. So My Portfolio is an evaluation tool for funders to use to look over their grant making and better understand where it's going. So we can see along the left a menu, um, a list of menu options that maybe looks familiar because that's a lot of similar sections that we had on the ecosystem just moments ago. 
but we can also see some nice visuals here as well as a way to evaluate if our money is actually going where we want it to be going. You know, it's, if it's actually aligned with those criteria that we've set for our giving around things like organization operating budget size, cash reserves, so financial stability, and things like geography. So in addition to those, the ability to see uh, those different analyses, we also have this reliance distribution. So as a reminder, reliance distribution is telling you what uh, percent of your grantee's operating budget your grant represents. And so if we wanted to maybe bolster our nonprofits, we could actually click and see, we can see there are five organizations who are over 50% reliant on my work, on my support. And so we can actually see who those organizations are and explore opportunities to, to better support them, whether that's maybe introducing them to other funders or maybe providing them capacity building opportunities. So let's continue. One more section I want to mention here is this grantees 990 availability. So this is telling you details about where the data is being drawn from for your My Portfolio and also more broadly across the platform, but specific to your grantees. And so if you look at this and you see, I really would love to get more up-to-date data in here. One of the great ways we suggest to boost these numbers is by offering a capacity building webinar to your grantees to get them on board Impala. And that's really a win-win for them and for you. It gets you updated information on your My Portfolio, but it also gets them updated profiles on the platform. So look to be hearing from David and I in the coming days to potentially explore this opportunity with you and your grantee partners. And with that, I'm going to actually pass it back to David to close us out with some slides. Thanks, Danielle. Let me get my screen share going here. Back to our slides. Can I get a thumbs up, Danielle? We good to go? Awesome. Great. Uh, thanks, Danielle, for showing everyone what the platform can do. Now let's talk about our partnership with Maine Philanthropy Center, which is how everyone is going to get plugged in. So as of now, free premium access is available for the next 12 months, and this applies to all funders and nonprofits who serve the Maine social impact sector. And this includes nonprofits who are based in Maine and nonprofits who are based outside Maine, but who actually serve the state. And on the funder side, it includes all funders based in the state, as well as those funders who may be outside Maine, who support projects in the state, and all of those funders' grantees. And again, a huge thank you to our friends at Maine Philanthropy Center for making all of this possible that we've been discussing today. So now I'd love to give you a sense of what you have to look forward to once you actually incorporate Impala into your workflow. And what I'm sharing here now are real quotes from real Impala community members, funders, and nonprofits. And I wanna lift up a few particular themes. From what we can see here, folks are feeling inspired, understood, and most importantly, Impala is making their work lives more efficient, effective, and impactful. And frankly, I can't wait to hear how it makes a difference for all of you. And so in the future, maybe some of these quotes will be coming from y'all in Maine. Uh, so Danielle, I want to hand it back over to you to close us out before we open things up for questions. Thanks, David. So we know this isn't going to happen on its own. It is going to take a little bit of effort. And that's what we're here to do. We are here to help. So in addition to myself, as you know, I'm joined by David. And you also have the rest of the Impala team here to help and support you on your journey. The key things to know about us are that one, we're experienced in this sector. And second, we're real people. So we're going to answer your emails as fast as we can, hop on demos with you and provide support as needed. And finally, we are really passionate about creating a thriving philanthropic sector. And we've learned a lot through this process. We want to make sure the onboarding experience is really easy, as we know you're super busy doing your important work. So we're going to ensure this is a light lift. And second, we've learned a ton from what hasn't worked in the sector already. So we are always going to aim to provide far more than you're asked to give us. And that is going to be how we raise the bar. So what happens now? Today, you all should have received an email to get on board on Impala. And if you're connected to a funder or a nonprofit, you can go ahead and claim your organization affiliation. And that whole process only takes two minutes to get going. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and explore everything that Impala has to offer. 
And if at any point in this process, you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at impala.digital. And for those of you who are funders on the call today, we, you should expect to hear from David or I in the coming days to provide dedicated support by video, email, or phone. And we really want to ensure that we get you on, help guide your onboarding process, and also ensure that your grantees can get access to this free, free resource through those things like capacity building webinars. And then once those have been done on an ongoing basis, we're here to help to ensure that you and your network of grantee partners is getting the most out of the platform. And I want to just close us out with some FAQs before we open it up for questions and answers at the end. So first of all, when can I access Impala? Right now, it's ready for you to go for the next year with that premium access. And how do you know if, how do I know if I'm eligible for that premium access? We've got you covered. Our platform will automatically recognize that you're part of this partnership. But if you think we've missed you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at Impala.digital and we'll sort it out for you. And as a consultant, if you're not a funder or nonprofit, if you're a consultant, you can still get on Impala and use everything it has to offer. You're welcome here to connect to any of your clients' accounts as long as you have their okay. And we can sign you up with as many of them as you'd like to work with on the platform. So what happens after that one year of premium access? Well, ultimately the choice is yours. You can choose to maintain that premium access with a small monthly fee, or you can stick with Impala's free robust version of those unlimited searches of the nearly 3 million profiles. You're not going to be hit with some big surprise bill, and we want to make sure you have access to the data you need to support your work. And for those of you who on the call today who are maybe DAF holders or fiscal sponsored, fiscally sponsored programs, I wanted to let you know that we have some functionality coming just for you in the coming weeks. So in the meantime, you can go ahead and get started on Impala as is right now, but we will be working to have profiles for you so you can have a home and have the visibility that you want on the platform. So with that, I want to open it up for questions and welcome anyone from my team also to chime in with anything that's come through the chat. Uh, maybe Simon or Shakar, if you, I know, and Laurel, you've been really doing a great job on the chat. So if there are any particular questions that you think haven't been, or that everyone should hear voiced, um, by all means, chime in as well. Thanks, David. I'll, I'll just jump in. We've had a ton of questions. And so first up, apologies if we didn't get to yours, um, but please feel free to reach out to us at support at impala.digital and we'll, we'll be really responsive. Our whole US team, including myself and the CEO, receive those emails um, so we can get back to you really, really quickly. Um, just a couple of questions that have come up recently. So first off, you know, how many users can you have? You can have as many as you like. Um, there's no limit to that. So your entire organization can have it. You can also invite your board members to have access and you can control the level of access as well. So if you don't want people to be able to edit your profile, you can set that as well. Um, we also had a great question from Mary Ann about you know, data being old. And this is something that the entire sector is confronting at the moment. So unfortunately, the IRS is pretty woefully behind. So every platform, Candid, ProPublica, is dealing with the same data lag from the IRS. Um, but importantly, the way that we get around this and the way that we're solving this is that we provide a free service where organizations can upload a more recent Form 990. So something they've already filed, say for uh, 2021 or 2022, and then we'll automatically take that information for them and update their profile. So it's a way for us to take the load off those organizations while also making sure that our data is more up to date. And we've seen a huge amount of organizations take us up on that. We have hundreds every day. Um, but that's another reason why we're able to overcome this data lag and while our, why our data is more up to date. I also see several uh, questions about comparison to Candid and questions about the costs. So I'll start uh, uh, with the comparison to Candid. I think that what we started uh, with is essentially taking uh, what GuideStar offers, what FDO offers, combining it into one platform and basically breaking the paywall. So by and large, everything that uh, is available in one of those platforms is also available in Impala. Uh, we would say that even more features and more insights. And about the costs, as both David and uh, Daniel spoke about, uh, we're still working on uh, uh, basically the cost, but we can ensure that it would not uh, uh, like it would be cheaper 
than uh, either of those platforms, and we assume that we will have uh, a price in the next two months uh, to share with you, and obviously we will share it uh, as soon as possible. We also had a great question from uh, Dick Thompson, which is about security, making sure that you know someone else isn't coming on and claiming or editing your profile's information. Um, so in order to claim a profile, you have to be verified. So that means that people can submit a request, but our team reviews each one of those to make sure that that person is authorized by the organization, meaning that they're a verified employee of the organization. Um, and the great thing is that you can also invite your colleagues and you can set their access level. So they could be an editor, they could be a viewer, um, it's up to you, or they could be an admin and that controls whether or not they can change the information in that profile. So you may want your board members, for example, to just have your access so they can come in and look at everything, but they can't play around with the data. Um, and that's a super co common option that we see. Another great question from Daniel related to, you know, which parts of the platform are, are free and which are part of the premium. So ecosystems, which Daniel showed you, that's the premium section. And all of the, you in this call and all main nonprofits and funders have access to that for 12 months. The rest of the platform, so every profile of a 501c3, that's almost 3 million, all parts of the search, all parts of their profile, there's no paywall there. That's free now and always. Um, and that also includes the list section that Daniel showed you as well. So the short answer is that the overwhelming majority of the platform is free and you're not going to like get into a profile, click through it and suddenly get a paywall when you get to the really juicy information. All of the profile, including every grant given and received is free and that always will be the case. Shahar, you on mute. Thank you. I also see a question about common grant applications and whether we have grant applications. So, I mean, it's in our roadmap to essentially create the ability to apply to grants through the platform. Right now, we still don't have it, but we uh, expect to start working it, uh, working on it uh, pretty soon. And I see a question on here. Similar Impala campaign began in Massachusetts, October 2022. Can you share feedback from that statewide effort? So I'll, I'll share in general, a lot of, we learned a lot from that those conversations and really great input from those users across the state. And one of those key examples is that list feature that I showed you all today. We heard from users we want to place on the platform. And so we created that tool within just a couple months, got it ready for folks to use, and now you all have access to it. So that's just one example, but that's the place where we really value your input as well. If you're going through the platform and see things that you would like to see differently or you'd like to see new data points, we'd love to hear from you. In general, as David showed on those testimonials, we've heard really great you know, really great positive feedback from folks about how responsive it is, how it really saves them a lot of time. And I hope that you'll have that same experience when you get going on the platform. Just want to underline the timeline though on this. We launched in Massachusetts in October. We learned about that lists idea by November and our team spoke about it. And by January, it was fully launched and live. So uh, we like making dreams come true. So bother us, email us, let us know what, uh, what you're wishing for. And we'll, we'll definitely get on it as soon as possible with our team. The question from Susie, whether we can share lists with everybody in the organization, and the answer is yes. All of the users that are connected to the same organizations can share lists, can share the notes on lists. It's supposed to be a collaborative tool uh, to simplify uh, your work. I also see questions about state grants and federal government grants. We're currently working on getting information on federal grants. Uh, on state grants, it will take us a bit more time just because the way the information is being kept in different, usually it's uh, the state attorney's office, different. So it's hard for us to create a sustainable way or scalable way. It will work for every state, but we are looking into it as well. There's a question from Courtney about contact info on the platform. We know that information is precious. So um, one, I want to give you a sense of the future direction of the platform. So this is definitely going to become something like a LinkedIn for fundraising with communications capabilities built in where folks can opt into. Um, so that's number one as far as the future goes. And then more in the immediate term, 
Uh, yes, you're able to go to organizations' websites um, that were pulled from 990s and try to see if there's contact info there. And in addition, definitely have a look at the people page on either the funder or nonprofit side, and then take that name and head on over to LinkedIn to see if that's a way to reach out to folks. At least that would be our recommendation for now. But I want to emphasize that this is a platform for everyone involved, so we're not necessarily blasting out email addresses of anyone and everyone, because I don't, I wouldn't want my email address blasted out there, except for here, of course. Uh, so we're just trying to be careful and, and, and attuned to everyone needs here in the ecosystem so everyone contributes and benefits um, I, see I, see, yep. please, <laughs> I see a great question here from kathy about causes might there be causes added we know that cause area list is not perfect it's drawn from the irs and you know we know they're not maybe as up to date as we'd like them to be so if you see any that you that stick out to you that shouldn't be there or that should be there do let us know but that keyword feature also helps solve for some of that if you don't see something covered in that cause area list you can use the keywords functionality as well i'll just add to that danielle that we actually as always we learn from people in the field so we did receive several requests of either adding cause areas or maybe changing cause areas to more modern terms and I mean, we just did that because we want to listen to you. We want to make sure that it works according to the language that uh, you want to project. So it's definitely possible. And please contact us. And uh, it's an easy discussion to uh, to have. I just want to emphasize that we're coming close to the end of our time together. and We'll be passing it back to Jeanette shortly. Um, but there's maybe time for one or two quick questions um, if folks on our team want to grab a few more. Yeah, um, first off, Paul, I love the feedback about a CRM. That's something we've heard a bit, and we're absolutely considering that. Um, just quickly on Rachel, we we answered this a little earlier, but basically the short answer why we created this is that Shahar, who's on the call, had his own nonprofit and dealt with a lot of these frustrations firsthand. But what we just felt is that it wasn't really fair that you spent a lot of time making your own profile on a lot of these platforms, and then suddenly you had to pay for access to see the same profile. Um, so that was one of the main reasons we created this. And we also just feel that, you know, data access is a basic right. So we wanted to try to level the playing field here for those organizations, no matter what their resources were or, you know, who founded them and where they're based. I just want to emphasize if anyone has not yet received their link to join the platform and they for sure want to, uh, please email us at support at impala.digital and we'll be sure to get it sorted out. Sometimes the, the link um, finds its way into the spam folder uh, or gets stuck, some, gets stuck in the pipe. So uh, please just email us at support at impala.digital and we'll get you plugged in um, with our support team ASAP. And then I saw a request to have more of these questions answered and shared afterwards, and we'll do our best to come up with something that will make sure you have all the answers uh, available to you easily. It's a great idea. Um, um, so David, maybe I'll just add, I just saw one uh, question from uh, Dana about how funders can update their grants. So essentially, we start with scraping the 990, so you don't have to do anything. If you want to update it, you can just give us your most recent 990 that was already submitted to the IRS or any other kind of grant transcript that you use so you don't have to work or uh, create any kind of information we know how to absorb it into the platform so whatever kind of uh, form you have you can just share it with us and we'll uh, update the profile for you amazing well, i want to hand it over to jeanette to keep us on track here to close us out uh and then uh, we will be you'll be hearing from all of us soon thank you Jeanette, over Great. to you. Great, and less than one minute. Um, thank you so much. This is, I think, the largest virtual presentation that we've done outside of our virtual conference in 2021. So this is really exciting, and I think speaks to how necessary and important and the hunger that our sector has for this democratized data and accessible data. Um, I want to give you all a call to action and remind you to um, you will be receiving an email from Impala and inviting you to join the platform if you haven't already. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that the one of the most um, wonderful parts of, of working with Impala is just how responsive they are. So seriously, do not hesitate to contact support at Impala.digital. The team will assist you right away. Bombard them with your good suggestions um, and ideas. And, um, uh, you know, take a good critical lens to this and see how it can best serve you as an organization and share that with them. They're really hungry for that knowledge. Um, and as others have mentioned earlier, this is a really pivotal moment for our sector. Um, 
uh, and we uh, can't let it pass us by. So I encourage you all to sign up for Impala today. And if you have any questions or um, need anything else, uh, the MPC team is also here for you as well. Um, but if it's Impala related, please actually email support at impala.digital and not me. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for uh, the wonderful Impala team. And I am going to stop talking because we are one minute over and I want to um, make sure that we end on time or that's, as on time as we can. That's pretty good. We'll, we'll, we'll smidge it. Uh, thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, everyone. We'll be sure that make sure you have this recording uh, shortly thereafter. All right. Have a great day.